I want to talk to you about what's going on with Othello. What do you mean? Word travels fast in this business. <laughs> so you want to give me a pep talk? Sorry your life's going down the toilet. Hang in there, kiddo. Not exactly. But I'll tell you one thing, you're not going to accomplish anything by feeling sorry for yourself. Life's not fair. So what? Get over it. You know, you have a very interesting bedside manner, might I add. I'm not your best friend, MP. I'm not here to coddle your ego. I'm here to put the best team possible on the floor, and I can't do that if you get shipped out because you gave up. Who said I'm giving up? I'm not allowed to be upset? You're allowed to be upset. But you need to channel that energy in a positive way. Play like your life depends on it and make it impossible for Othello to trade you. Yeah, well, that's easier said than done. Right, look, I'm only going to say this once, so listen up. I've been in this game a long time. And I didn't get to where I'm at by playing games. When, when you're where you're at, there's a temptation to try to play things out in the press. All right, well, that might work for the top 1% of players in the league. But for everybody else, it backfires. I'm not saying you don't have that kind of talent, but it's too early in your career to pull that kind of power play. All you can do is produce, and I can help you produce. You just got to trust me. Coach, I trust you. I just don't think I'm good enough. I mean, right now, I feel like my only choice is to get my hands dirty. That's not who you are, MP. No disrespect, Coach, but how do you know that? I'm only 21 years old. I don't even know who I am yet. Not fully. How do you know that's not me? Look, I can't tell you what to do. You're your own person, and you got to make your own decisions. All I can do is give you my perspective. What you do with it, that's up to you. I can respect that. And I promise you, if you do this the right way, I'll do everything in my power to help you to succeed. But if you want any help with the other way, I can't do anything for you. I, I hear you, Coach. That's totally fair. Good. Now go out there and prove Othello wrong. And on the floor tonight, a collection of some of the league's brightest young players. And make no mistake about it, these guys are a work in progress, but the talent is undeniable. Can't wait to see who becomes the alpha dog in this group. And the starting lineup for the Timberwolves. Underneath in the post, Towns and Gobert. Backcourt guard to Russell and Edwards. And it's Prince in at the three slot. And one of the biggest stories of the summer was Rudy Gobert being traded. Gets a fresh start with the Timberwolves. And he's got his first free throw of the game. Oh, take a break. Take a break. Two shots. And he makes the first. An improved free throw shooter compared to his earlier seasons. Nice to see Gobert attack his weakness. And Gobert drops them both. And so Morant will bring it up for Memphis. This is their first chance this season playing the Timberwolves. Yeah, some history here, though. Of course, they won that first round series in last year's playoffs and ended up sending them packing. Had an incentive in a game like this. I mean, they've got to be ready to rise up to that challenge. And Brooks gets it to go. Inside, outside, mid-range. Brooks has the accuracy to make whatever look he gets work for him. No one near Edwards as he lets it fly. All three off the mark. Here's Morant. And 
Nobody gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. Yeah, going hard to the rack, making a statement here early on. Yeah, that's how he rolls. I mean, intimidate the opponent right now. Boy, Morant's brought a lot of excitement. He almost always makes the night's highlight reel. He is what I'd call an elite showman. Towns, wide open. Gets the three-pointer to fall. And the lack of effort to fight over the screen there makes that an easy shot. Well, I'm going to credit the screen. I mean, that's a good, strong pick he lays there. Now here's Morant. Looking at his point production, he averages almost eight points a game. His shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. Well, the contact can't trip Moran up. He just glides past it and into his shot. And last year, Minnesota had a tough end to their season. In their 10th playoff appearance, they made their ninth first-round exit. Moran passes to Brooks. to the hoop and it's thrown down hard with both hands and the quickness of Brooks's drive can be overwhelming burst inside before the D can react for Minnesota they've gone two or three here to start off the game I don't think the Timberwolves Greg plan on letting their playoff statistics discourage them at all and that's kind of the beauty of this squad they're out to make new franchise history not focusing on the pass just keep evolving Absolutely. as a team and they call the eight second violation too much time getting it up court russell kicks to edwards all alone Gobert down low. Adams defending. And there it is for him. He knows his job. Gobert is there to own the glass and cash in on as many second chance opportunities as he can. Now here's Brooks. Over Prince. And he overshot that one, missing. I tell you what, the defense should send Christmas cards for that miss. Edwards. Plays it up and banks it in. Edwards got his second bucket of the game to go. Built like a linebacker, Edwards is not your average off guard, folks. And you love seeing that great mobile one drive a second time. And putting that pressure on the rim. That's what it's all about, threatening with that attack. Now here's Morant. He has five. From ten feet out, that one falls. Morant's got seven. And that speaks to Morant's fearlessness. Even amongst the trees, he is confident looking to score with the ball. Edwards with another miss. He's certainly been cold this quarter, guys, but trying to shoot his way back into a groove. And then Morant rims it in. Yeah, that's fire right there. Morant practicing for the dunk contest. I see you, young fella. And a look at the mobile one drive. Driving right into your living room. Nice take. Staying aggressive with this game. Still very much up in the air. Timeout called. First of the game for Minnesota. Every time out, a chance to review the lineups, matchups, or call a play. And I agree. I think there's going to be a new wrinkle in their game plan when they come out of this timeout. Change for the Timberwolves. Anderson's checked in. We've got 118 left in the first quarter. Towns, the pass to Russell. The Timberwolves working the ball around now. And Anderson kicks to Russell. For three, Edwards. Good, and the assist goes to Russell. Edwards got his third bucket of the night. Well, Edwards looking almost automatic there. Didn't wait too long to put that shot up. Here's Jay Edwards defending. Jay misses. 
And it's Anderson with the ball for the Minnesota Timberwolves. They come into this having outplayed Phoenix the last game. In that one, they owned the backboards. Most of the second chance opportunities went to them. Plenty of heart and hustle in that regard. And they made sure to hit the glass hard and off. Several lead changes going on here in the early portion of this game. It reminds me of that cameo song, Back and Forth. Now, here is Russell. Really played well against Phoenix in his last out. Terrific read on the part of Russell that time. Scanned the court, spotting the open man, and then whipped it there for an easy bucket. Morant scanning the floor. Now the pass to Bain. A floater, and that one drops. Just such a well-rounded offensive player. He's got a little bit of everything. One second left, and no good that time. John Moran has been leading the charge, guys, for Memphis. He finishes with nine points in the quarter. The D is having all sorts of problems with him. And don't go away. We'll be right back. Your Grizzlies, you some good action already in this one, but a fairly even matchup after the first quarter of play. And taking a look at the Grizzlies' performance here, guys, uh, what have they been doing or not doing? Yeah, in that first period, they look to push in transition at every opportunity. Yeah, I like the way they play. They're looking to get up and down the court every time. Racehorse basketball here tonight. Strap it up. Don't look down. You'll miss something. On the court for the Timberwolves as our second quarter is underway. A pair of number one picks are at the forwards. Edwards in town. And it's Rudy Gobert. Then it's Russell. And it's Noel in at the two spot. Now here's Brooks. After the miss from Carl Anthony Towns. And that one's good. Brooks. You know, Greg, we know to win at the highest level, you need your star players to show up in the big game. With that in mind, what's the key? You know, it, it's their will and their ability to fight. If you look at the great ones, even when things haven't gone their way, they continue to scratch and claw and do everything in their power to try and get the W. Here's Russell following the score by Dylan Brooks. As to Noel. Good, and the assist goes to Russell. Orchestrating the offense like a vet. D'Angelo getting everybody involved. Russell against Morant. Trying to get open his Brooks. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Nice work to get it inside and draw the contact. Exactly. The defense determined not to allow the easy layup right there. They'll settle for making him earn the free throws. Both free throws good from Morant. Already a very confident player. Knocking down those free throws only fuels that. Pass to Noel. Offensive rebound. A second chance effort. That one's good. And the Grizzly lead is cut down now to just four in the basket from Towns. Well, I don't think I've ever seen a lack of effort from Towns on the glass. He is a glass eater and keeps possessions alive for his team. Now here's Morant. He's got 11. Brooks outside. The Grizzlies with another miss. Adam shot is good. Again and again, they're dissecting the defense and creating those high percentage looks from inside. And even under pressure in close, I think they've still done a good job maintaining concentration and converting the opportunities. Noel, no good. Memphis leading by six. And Brooks, here we go. Who's the best young catalyst in the game? Some people will say Doncic. Some will say Trey Young, and some might even say John Morant. Second chance shot. Out to Russell. To the left wing. Fires the three. And the rebound goes to the Grizzlies. Second quarter of play with almost three minutes gone. This one for three. And the basket by Jay. And now it's an 11-point Grizzly lead. And Kia and the NBA have a long and great relationship. And now, Greg, they've tapped MV to be a spokesman for the brand. I mean, guys like Blake Griffin and LeBron have worked with Kia in the past. A good move from them to add MV as the next player to rep their brand. 
149 left to play here in the half. Morant against Russell. And here's Morant. He's got 11. Three on the clock. From deep. And again, that's the Grizzlies from deep. To be outstaged, Morant saying right back at you. Outside, Edwards. One fifteen left to play in the first half. Basket, good. Edwards got 11. I like the play call. Very solid, making perfect use of the pick to get a great look. Brooks feeling it out a bit. And the officials calling for a three-second violation. Minnesota. Clark, he's checked in for Jackson. Dorian Prince, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. Timberwolves trail by nine. There's 48 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Launches it. That shot, no good. And Memphis the other way now. Their last game, a win against San Antonio, looking to carry that into this one. Remarkable consistency from deep. You can't count on that every game, especially on the road. Yeah, you know, the defense had no answer for him. To do that kind of damage on the road, impressive. Here is Edwards, following the basket by John Morant. Here's Prince. Nice D from Brooks. Solid rebound there, and with the score like it is, that's an area where they can't afford to get lazy. Yeah, another column in the stat sheet that hasn't gone in their favor. To climb back, they've got to put forth more effort. Pull up Jay, and with that shot, the yeah, Grizzly yeah. lead is cut down now to just nine in the bucket from Russell. You know, I love seeing players that's use the middle good. of the court. It just opens up your options. And for a guy like Russell, it gives him a lot of freedom offensively. And so we wrap up the first half. Grizzlies lead by nine. We'll see you after halftime for the beginning of the third quarter. And happy you could join us. We've got two quarters left to go in regulation. Guys, John Morant has been sensational. Man, he's been running wild on them through that first half. Absolute dynamite on offense. And you know what? I'll be interested to see just how much he's got left in the tank. That first half had to take a lot out of him. Adams is the pivot for him with Jackson Jr. at the four. Morant is out there with Jay, and it's Brooks in at the small forward position. And that's the group for Taylor Jenkins, who began the second half. And the shot clock expires. 24-second violation. So it's the Timberwolves now. Nine-point game. To the paint, here's Edwards. It falls through, Edwards making him six for 11 in the game. Well, you love to see Edwards Moving shine on offense like this. I know it's got to be making his coach happy, too. And you look at Anthony Edwards, and GA, he is becoming the leader of this Timberwolves team, isn't he? I think he is. I mean, partly it's his production with his numbers up across the board, but it's also his personality. He plays with tremendous swagger. Here is Russell. Right now, he averages nearly 23 points a game, a relentless offensive force. Driving in. It's rebounded by Memphis. Moran passes to Jay. And Memphis turns it over again. And if you're just joining us, we play it over a minute here in the third. 
Near the three-point line, it's Edwards. They grab their own miss, and there's Gobert, Gobert, putting it right back in. And when Gobert goes up, he gets up. Hair time to spare as he slams the put back home. And out of bounds as the Timberwolves gain possession. Timberwolves trail by five. Outside, Edwards. Third quarter here, over a minute and a half into it. Fires for three. Rebounded by Jackson. Jackson's got four rebounds in this game. Towns with the steal. Fast break, Minnesota. Edwards leading the charge. Shooting foul as the whistle blows. He'll shoot two free throws. That's on Jaron Jackson. Yeah, and you know, when Edwards is aggressive, I think it forces defenders to try to get physical back. And when he's close to the rim, he usually is able to draw the foul as a result. Looking at who's out there now for the Grizzlies. Tillman, he's checked in for Steven Adams. Bain comes in for Dylan Brooks. And Tyus Jones subbed in for Morant. And we're just about two minutes into the second half now. And Shea gets the whistle that time. That's his first foul. Second team foul. Minnesota with the ball. They haven't given up any points here in the second half. Here's Edwards. Goes back up. Towns. And he battles ball for the ball and gets the second chance bucket. Towns has got seven points in the game. And defensively, they're on their heels every time the ball comes inside. Yeah, I think they've got to ramp up the aggressiveness. If they don't, things are just going to get worse from here. Stolen away. Second half of play with just under two and a half minutes gone. Here's Jay, defended by Gobert. And out of bounds as the Timberwolves gain possession. The Timberwolves making a switch here. McLaughlin's checked in. Jordan McLaughlin. Now the Timberwolves with it. Good momentum, eight straight points. Now Edwards, 15 points in the game. Sinks the three-pointer. Edwards got the lead up to two now for the Timberwolves. Oh, a great take by Edwards, making the correct decision in the pick and roll there. And the Grizzlies call their first time out of the game. And since being the first pick of the 2020 draft, Anthony Edwards has not disappointed. I'll tell you something, partner. The Timberwolves got that one right. Did they ever? I mean, we knew about his nuclear athleticism, but the leadership, the work ethic, the ability to impact winning also have been evident. This is a multi-time all-star going forward. Here is Edwards after the made shot from Jay, and Edwards with the stuff. And we all know how explosive Edwards can be, reminding us there with that thunderous slam. Here's Jay. From outside, off the mark. And the great shooters know when the... Oh, oh, man! Oh, doctor. Oh, my goodness. Anthony Edwards throwing it down with force. Get this guy in the dunk contest. That was a second look at our mobile one drive. Amazing control on display. And that's a thing of beauty. Certain plays, almost no words. You just sit back and appreciate. Passes it to Prince. Oh, and that one, no question, powered it down. Prince can really elevate now. He plays much bigger than 6'7", and we just saw an example of that there. Here's Jay, guarded by Reed. Here's Jay, 11 points in the game. And that one goes out of bounds. Last touch by Anderson. 54 seconds left here in the third quarter. And they turn over the 24-second buzzer, signaling the shot clock violation. Here's Minnesota. What a stretch they've got going here. 17-2. Edwards can't hit. The Grizzlies trail by six. Here's Jay. Oh, 
just four to shoot. And there's the shot clock violation. Couldn't get the shot off in time. Noel, he's checked in for Minnesota. Now into the lineup for the Timberwolves. Jalen Noel. Timberwolves leading by six. Here's McLaughlin. Softly drops in the photo. McLaughlin's got his first points in this one. Boy, that was a sweet-looking teardrop. There's very little defense for that. And that's just another mistake. I mean, they, they've got it on autopilot, and they look totally dejected. Here's McLaughlin. Poke loose. And here we go. The Grizzlies on a fast break. And Memphis turns it over again. Minnesota's ball. So it's the Minnesota Timberwolves in the driver's seat of eight points at the end of the quarter. Trailing to start the quarter, they battled hard and pulled off a tremendous comeback. Now, the fourth quarter has arrived. So good to have you with us. Minnesota in the lead. On the court for Minnesota. Two big men inside, Towns and Gobert. Then there's Kyle Anderson, and there's D'Angelo Russell, and it's Noel in at the two. He's just stretching them out. The defense has got to do a better job of staying attached to him. Yeah, especially with the score being what it is. I mean, you've got to tighten it up on D. And Memphis making a change here. Moran's checked in. And the basket by Jay. It's been like this all night for both teams. The offense is having their way. Any lull in the action so far has been short-lived because there have been nothing but buckets in this one. Anderson passes to Noel. Inside, here's Gobert. And finished off by Gobert. You won't find a higher percentage shot in this league. Gobert from ground zero. Here's Jay. Off the mark there with the three-point shot. Timberwolves leading by 10. Russell passes to Towns. Back to Russell. Just over a minute played here in the fourth. Towns kicks to Russell. Six to shoot. And again, it's Minnesota. And you know, despite the turmoil Russell has faced early in his career, there you see why he remains one of the league's top young prospects. Here's Jay, and he's good on the three ball. Jay's got, it, got six points in the quarter. I love the spirit he's shown tonight, particularly on the offensive end. Well, I tell you what, the hole would be a lot deeper if he wasn't being as efficient as he's been so far. Brooks on the double team to the middle. Here's Noel, and the layup falls. And even stronger second half. Tremendous efficiency at the offensive end of the floor. Yeah, they're in a nice zone right now, and that basket looks, you know, it can handle two balls at once. It looks like now it could probably, for them, handle three or four balls at once as well as their shooting. Edwards has come in for Noel, and Jay gets the whistle that time. That'll be his second foul of the game. And the Timberwolves with possession here. Outside, Russell. From the corner. They get it again. Nice shot by Gobert. Gobert. Gobert's got the lead up to 13 now for the Timberwolves. And using his insane wingspan and athletic frame, Gobert can flat out dominate down low. And so it's Russell with it. He brings it up for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Anderson, good, and the assist goes to Russell. Oh, Russell's got assist number seven for him tonight. Big miscommunication on defense. He recognizes it and quickly takes advantage. Boy, the defense oh, looks shell-shocked. I mean, they're on the ropes right now, on their heels. And he can take over in a nanosecond. I mean, once he catches fire, it's difficult to squelch it. Edwards looking it over, kicks to Towns. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. 
Hey guys, how about the dominant young career Carl Anthony Towns is in? Very few can dominate like he can, Kevin. Towns is a monster. I mean, averaging a double-double every year of his career so far. So valuable in what he brings to the table. Prince has checked in for the Timberwolves. And the basket by Jay. And this is the game plan for him. He's a big part of their floor space. And you know what? It's all about the long distance game for him tonight. He's getting it done from out there. From down low. And too long on the shot. And that is a textbook example of how to defend your rim. And you know, guys, I love his fight and grit on the interior. I mean, he never lets a shot go uncontested. Wow. Here he's the long range jumper. Another, Another bomb for him right now. His three point shooting might be the key to cutting that lead. I don't think there's any question about it. I mean, as long as he keeps knocking them down, they might as well keep going back to the well. No reason to let him go run dry. Keep firing that thing. And what's your take, guys, on the hustle sticks for the Grizzlies? Really a great job in this one, forcing the issue defensively. Great quickness and discipline combined, making ball handlers very uncomfortable. And also, guys, they've been showing how dangerous they are in the open floor. When they see a chance to get easy points, boy, they just jump it. Boy, that is awesome defense, guys, against a capable finisher. Well done. I'm sure the coaches love that. Good hammer from three. Barry's his 10th triple of the game. Unbelievable. Minnesota calls timeout. They're up by two. There's 53 seconds left in the game. And now a moment to present the New Balance player of the game, John Morant. You know, honestly, I'm a bit in shock. I mean, he couldn't miss. Let's look at this stat line. You got to really see it to believe it. Complete confidence and all out effort from him. And, you know, he made sure this was his night in spades. And now the latest from our reporter, David Olden. David, we'll listen in on what Chris Finch told the team. This game is obviously close, could go either way. And he wanted to make sure that his guys were all on the same page and were all staying with the game plan in order to close this one out. Kevin? Thank you, David. Here's Jay. And again for three. He has been all the money from deep. Yep, definitely looking to shoot it as much as possible. This is a huge possession. And this is where all the hard work pays off. You have to be able to execute under pressure. Now the Grizzlies with it. They lead by one. And out of bounds is the Timberwolves gain possession. Huge turnover there and at a bad time, too. You have to value every possession. Minnesota calls timeout. They're down by one. 29 seconds left to play here in the fourth. Seconds left here in the fourth quarter. And here's Edwards from the arc. The rebound by Steven Adams. And they commit an intentional foul. We'll see another one of those so they can get into the penalty. Honestly, just doing what they have to in order to get the basketball back. That's a good foul, though. I like that. Clock management at this time of the game. And that hurts as he doesn't get the first one to fall. Trying to focus now on the second. And the second of two is good. That will put them up by two. 20 seconds left to play in the final quarter. And they get it. Count it! A huge shot to tie it up. Oh, you just love seeing a player with absolutely no fear. Cool, calm, collected, and confident in the biggest moment of the game? Yes. Timeout called. The Grizzlies. It's tied at 64. 11 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Seconds left in the fourth quarter. Here's Jay. There's the three. Full time. Well, and this has been their strategy throughout the fourth period. We'll see 
how it pans out. You know what? Teams can get a little three happy down the stretch sometimes. Letting it fly. So a close game sees Memphis take this one. What a show they put out here at home tonight. I mean, these are those games that feel so great to win, and, and really, it's like a knife in the gut to lose. Uh, you, you gotta love being on edge of your seat and just wondering what's going to happen. How is this thing going to play out? And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Clark Kellogg. Oh, I'm hearing you're thinking about staying after all. Yeah, things got a little emotional the other day, <laughs> and this is where I want to be ultimately. Great. Well, now all we got to do is game plan. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So, Mila and I, we discussed, and we think we want to avoid the press in this. Just put my head down, focus, play the best basketball that I can play, because if Othello wants to trade me, he's going to be the one that looks like a clown, not me. Uh, okay, yeah, that that is an option, but I don't think it's our best one here, man. All right, then, let, let me hear something. Look, MP, you are a phenomenal player. I mean, you have unlimited potential, and you know I believe this, otherwise I wouldn't be here focusing all my energy on you like this. But... Right now, you've already got an uphill battle with the fans. And as it stands, if Othello leaks a trade rumor, you're going to have half this city dancing in the streets. Oh, come on, man. You don't think that's just a little too extreme right now? Uh, research shows that sports fans are 78% more likely to dance in celebration than any other type of fan, and that includes fans of ballroom dancing. Funny enough. <sighs> Thanks, Ash. Look, I'm not saying you can't do the whole good soldier routine, but... Dog, to play so well that a trade is impossible without doing any maneuvering in the press? I mean, that's extremely difficult. Impossible. <laughs> Look, why don't you just play as well as you can while trying to work the press in your favor? I mean, but, it's the best of both but worlds. But isn't doing all mm -hmm. that behind-the-scenes stuff bad for my brand? Exactly. Like, Ashley, what do you think? Yeah, okay, it's a possibility that it could hurt your image, okay. but that is a very remote possibility, okay? No one will blame you for wanting to stay on your own team. Mm -hmm. It's okay. when you try to force your way out that there's a problem. You know what? What if he's not comfortable trying to get another man fired? Right. Okay. I guess you guys haven't heard of the golden rule. Oh, Treat others rule, as you would like to be treated. Rule. Okay, fine, fine. If that's the case, then we just won't do it at all. Does that's that sound good? That's not what I'm saying. I'm just okay, saying well, you must not believe in his talent opinion, very well. If you want to, beg if you want to control as many variables team. as possible, MP, you want to stay in this city, have a family with Mila like you plan to? You'll use every weapon at your disposal. You can try and control right. all the things you want with all this shenanigans and still get traded. So it's how you want to sleep at night. So it's really up to you, man. What are you feeling? You know how you want to play this? Listen, I just don't want to leave anything up to chance. MP. Mila, I'm sorry, but it's my career. And I'm doing what I feel is right. Okay, I just want to make sure you're doing this because you actually want to and not because you're feeling pressured. No, I'm doing it because I feel like this is what I need to do for both of us. Trust me on this one, okay? Okay. Then we'll do it. All right. All right, Rick, talk to me. Uh, Ashley. The goal is to get the national press to call for Othello's ouster. Okay. But they take their cues from the local guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first step is getting the guys on the beat on our side. Yes, that's yes. right. All but right. it's not going to be easy. It's going to be a little tricky because we can't just, you know, come out and tell them that Othello's right. trying to trade you. I mean, at this point, if we do that, there'll be plenty of people in the city happy to see you go. The key here is to make the case that Othello is a problem for the future of the franchise. That takes time, though. All right, so walk me through it. We start small. Okay. I'll set up a meeting with John Luck. You can tell him all about how Othello threw a temper tantrum over the idea of, of winning fans of the city. Uh -huh. Wait, but wouldn't doing an interview like that put me in line of fire? Yes, which is why you'll do the interview as an anonymous source. Mm. All right, no names, just facts. Yeah, okay. let everyone know that it was a PR initiative from the top down and everyone was supposed to get on board. Oh, well, everyone was supposed to get on board. Right. Except Othello. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So plant the seed that he's not a team player. He does things his own way, even when it's a detriment to the team. Ooh, right. This sounds good, man. What's next? I'll call John. I'll explain what you're there to talk about. Tell him that it's off the record. That way, he has to talk to people inside the organization in order to publish. If you tell him where to sniff around, even a puppy dog like John Luck can find a bone. <laughs> so we really doing this, huh? Oh, we really doing Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And it's going to work, too. Yeah, it better work, man. I'll text you after the meeting is set up. Meantime, wouldn't hurt to play a few great games. <laughs>
I'll see what I can do. Yeah. Mila, yep. what do you think about this? This is the way you want to go. It sounds like a good plan. All right. See you later, man.